Hello, in this video we are going to talk about this filter, which is the LX Stream filter from Optolong. This is a dual narrowband filter and I want to share with you my experiences by using this filter for astrophotography using a very cheap DSLR from Canon. And by cheap I really mean cheap. I am using the Canon 2000D or uh, T7 depending on if you're looking at it uh, in the US or Europe. This is a very basic DSLR from Canon, an entry level camera one of the cheapest you can get right now and the only thing I did to use it for photography is to astro modify it so normally these kind of dual band filters are made for one shot color astro dedicated cameras and I want to see if this is usable with a cheap DSLR and if you can can get decent images and if using such a filter is even a good idea at all in with with such a camera so uh, yeah let's dig into that Alright, so the Electrum filter from Optolong is very well established on the market. It's been around for uh, over a year now and it's being uh, really appreciated by a lot of astrophotographers. And, uh, but if you don't know what this filter is all about, the dual narrowband in this filter and also in this one, which is the uh, Ellen Hans, the predecessor of the Elextreme, both of these filters are dual narrowband. What that means is that they will block all of the light incoming into your camera, except for only very, very narrow ranges of wavelengths that surround the H-alpha and also the oxygen-3, the two main sort of emission uh, type of light that comes from emission nebula, like all of the, you know, the Orion nebula, the North America nebula, and a lot of, a lot of cool nebula in both Northern and Southern hemisphere. And by isolating hydrogen alpha, and oxygen 3 at the same time, you can use uh, a color camera that has a Bayer filter array to capture both H alpha and O3 and come up with uh, bicolor images that look pretty cool. And you can use these, um, you can use a camera and your rig even in light polluted areas, which is pretty awesome. But the problem with these filters or at least as it is being perceived by some people, is that because they block so much light, is a cheap DSLR camera actually able to handle such a low amount of, so such a low number of photons coming into the sensor? And especially with the Elextreme, because the difference between these two filters, the Ellen Hands and the Elextreme, my Elextreme is actually mounted in the field flattener of my telescope, so I don't physically have it, so the box will have to do for that, uh, for this purpose. Uh, they both work in a similar way, but the LX stream, um, how is it different from the LN Hans is that those bands around H alpha and O3 are way narrower than those bands with the LN Hans. Uh, I think with the LX stream, uh, we're looking at the band around seven nanometers, which is pretty good. And uh, the problem is I've been using these, uh, I've been using the Allen Hands for a long time and you can see some of these images that I have captured using the Allen Hands and that DSLR and I already mentioned it in a couple of my previous videos and as you can see you can get fantastic results. But I have seen some opinions online that the LX stream because it has narrower bands it blocks off more light that you may need to use a higher ISO, which your cheap DSLR might not be able to handle very well, or maybe longer exposure times to compensate for the lower uh, number of photons coming in because of the stronger filtering capabilities of the Extreme. Maybe you need a longer exposure, which both your camera in terms of heat noise maybe cannot handle, and also maybe your mount cannot handle it either to have pinpoint stars with exposures you know, longer than five minutes or something. And um, I have been using the Alex Stream. Uh, Optolong was actually kind enough to send this filter to me for testing. I have not paid for this filter anything, uh, but uh, this sort of video and this, can you call it a review? I don't know. Uh, impressions and sort of experiences as absolutely honest. There is nothing biased here in what I'm about to say. Uh, so they didn't have anything to say about what I say in the video. So indeed, this filter blocks off more light than the Ellen has. So let me actually show that to you on a example where I have captured, this is a single uh, image, single exposure of the um, flaming star nebula. You probably cannot see it here, but it's there, trust me, you'll see it in a moment. 
And here is the same photo, I mean, the same framing, and the same exposure parameters, which is uh, two minutes of an exposure and ISO 3200 on my Canon 2000D. And this one is with the LX Stream. The framing is pretty much exactly the same. Let's actually go to the compare view here. We have the exact same exposure settings as you can see. And here with the image taken with the Extreme, you can see some hints of the nebula actually. And on this image you do not because, uh, and this is to be expected because the Extreme blocked off more light, more unwanted light. And this is actually key here so that the nebula came through a little bit. And don't worry about the fact that the stars are a little bit bigger on the image from the Enhance. I actually had some issues with focusing and since then I bought an electronic focuser so I don't need to worry about focusing at all. So this is definitely a human error and not some kind of issue with the Ellen Hans filter. The key thing to remember here, and by the way, let me actually show you some images, some final images that I have captured with the LX Stream so you can see that this filter is actually fantastic to be used even if you're using a cheap Astro modified DSLR camera. Here is the image of the California Nebula that I have recently captured. Here is an image of the Rosette Nebula and also one of my recent projects, the Seagull Nebula. All of these have been captured using the Extreme filter and I think the results are fantastic. And I would highly recommend to use uh, the Extreme even if you have a cheap DSLR because the thing to remember is that you don't necessarily have to use a higher ISO or a longer exposure time because these two filters, both the Enhance and the Extreme, they are trying to isolate the good data that comes from the nebula. The data uh, from the exactly hydrogen alpha wavelength and exactly oxygen 3 wavelength. Because these filters, I keep <laughs> looking down at these filters, because these filters are, you know, analog devices, they're not digital devices that can isolate exactly this wavelength, they have to pass a little bit on the left and a little bit on the right side of the spectrum around the, the, the actual wavelength that you want to capture. And this other light, other than these exact values, is basically a light pollution. So what the L-Extreme does better than the L-Enhance does is that it lets in less of that light pollution. You still get the exact same pretty much amount of good data, the signal that you want with both of these filters, but the Ellen Hans is letting in more light pollution that you don't want. And you can see it on this comparison. The image with the Ellen Hans is brighter because we captured more uh, other light that we don't care about. And you don't even see the flaming star nebula without being it, without it being processed at all. Uh, because we have captured more light pollution than we have captured using the LX Stream. And you can keep the same exposure settings, you will still capture the same amount of good data, and if you capture enough exposures, you can stack them, and you can pull out amazing detail and amazing images. So absolutely, I would recommend the LX Stream. The thing with the LX Stream and difference that maybe people are confused about is that using the LX Stream, you can expose for longer if your mount and camera can handle that. And you also can use a higher gain if you want to, but I don't really see a point of doing that if you uh, if your camera would, would handle it well. You can do it using the LX Stream because it blocks off the light pollution, whereas you cannot do it with the LN Hands because at some point you will just saturate the image entirely with set light pollution. So that's why the LX Stream is better and that's why no, no matter if you have a one-shot color camera, an expensive one-shot color astro dedicated camera or a cheap DSLR, with both of these cases you can successfully use the LX Stream filter and I really don't have anything bad to say about it. Maybe other than the fact that there is another filter coming up that is very similar to the LX Stream, that the, those bands are even narrower. Like I said, with the LX Stream, the bands are around seven nanometers, and there's a new filter coming up, the L Ultimate from Optolong, which I may be able to test at some point, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. Uh, which has even narrower bands, uh, which are, I think, three nanometers. So this is going to be insane. And you can, and the cool thing about these filters is that you can use them in light polluted areas. I'm shooting all of my images recently. And all of these that you have seen in this video are captured from Bortle 7 Sky. So you can totally use that. Uh, but just remember that uh, these are narrow band filters, so they are best to use using um, for um, emission nebulae, that kind of targets. If you shoot galaxies or uh, reflection nebula or things like these, um, or comets, I don't know, with, with narrow band filters, you are not going to get uh, that great results. Those filters are really made for emission nebula, which are, by the way, the best objects to shoot in the night sky, the most sort of 
incredible to look at and astonishing and yeah so an extreme highly recommended no matter what camera you have you will definitely have better results than with the L enhance one caveat with these two filters is that this one the L enhance as you can see this is a clip-in filter so you can actually put it uh, between the lens and your camera and you can do astrophotography with a camera lens however the L extreme as of today it uh, does not come in this flavor of being a clip-in filter. You need to use it with a telescope. There are only like um, 1.25 inch and 2 inch versions, depending on what kind of field flattener do you have or what kind of camera sensor are you using. So the L Extreme, you need to have a telescope. The L Enhance, if you only have a camera lens, and uh, you can you can totally go for the L Enhance. I've been very happy with this filter. It does let a little bit more light pollution, but it doesn't mean that you cannot use it in uh, from the city. I have been using this exact filter from my exact location, and this is the Flaming Star Nebula uh, final image that I have captured using the L Enhance. So you can totally do it, but it will require a little bit more sort of processing and dealing with that excessive light pollution that uh, with the L-Extreme, it's just better. You just get better data with the L-Extreme, no matter what camera you use. So that's, that is the final point I wanted to make. Like I said, if you want to stay tuned for future videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Also, if you like this video, give it a like. I would also appreciate that. And yeah, hopefully you have some clear nights in the coming future. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.